All right, I just filmed the whole intro, but I realized that I had the camera in landscape mode, so or I had it in portrait mode. So, uh, <clears throat> so here's the deal. I'm doing something a little bit different today. Obviously, I have myself in front of the camera, which uh, I'm not really used to. So, bear with my awkwardness a little bit. Um, I want to do a quick update on some of the the cars, and then also uh, a new car that I added to the collection and yeah so i figured first let's do an update on the 86 and then we can kind of go over the new ride so as you can see um got the hood is actually shut um got the cokey grill on um it's not perfect because uh, i cut the the factory one and you can see i gotta do some a little bit of cleanup here but it's all right it's not that's not terrible um, the, uh, what's it called? The, the Zanke, the Zanke grill did not want to fit with these headlights for some reason. So, um, uh, I'm still kind of working on making those good, uh, swaps of just OEM corners. And then the biggest change you'll be able to see is I threw some rotor grids. They're 15 by nine, negative 15. Um, but they sit pretty dang good, um, despite being factory, factory, um, metal, not cut out. They actually sit pretty decent. So I'm pretty happy about that. Let's, uh, let's go under the, oh yeah, let's go over here real quick. Um, so over here, I'm doing all this twice because I, I already did this, so but I, I filmed it the wrong way, so bear with me a little bit. Um, I've gathered most of the parts here for the um, manual rack swap. My, my buddy Danny kind of hooked me up here. Um, got the 8.6 manual rack um, boots. These are some like aftermarket outers. I'm not sure what they're from. Don't know if I'm going to use them or not. I don't really need adjustment like that. So... I'm still debating. I do have these outers, but they're a little loose. So um, these are inner, I, these are new inners. Problem is I have to go through and see exactly what you're supposed to be using. Cause I know this is my first time doing this complete swap. I know you're supposed to use like manual inners and power steering outers, I think. So I'm still kind of working. Um, I've been doing so many different projects that it's um, I haven't been able to pinpoint each one. I kind of just like to wait until I'm actually doing it and before I deep into actually like researching because it can become a little bit too much. You sit too much time on the computer and um, yeah, so. So yeah, let's go over more. So Manny Rack Swap, basically what I need for that is I just need um, the bushings, the adapter bushings adapter bushings and then maybe a few other small things but nothing major so it's over here one big improvement I made interior is the same um, nothing's really changed there I gotta like glue this part back down but if you notice I actually have a hood release now man that was hard to find um, nobody wants to get rid of it and I didn't feel like paying for a new one, so I was able to find a guy that had this um, on the low, on Club A6 Facebook page. So, hold on. Where you at? Oh, there she is. Not used to having that, so. Um, nothing really crazy new here, right? Uh, I've been, so the car will start up and run, um, and it'll idle and it starts up great. Um, it's almost like you, you, you'd think it's perfect. Um, the problem is once you start giving it throttle, it kind of die. It kind of wants to bog and die. So I've done, I've swapped out everything you can. New, I got new O2. I swapped out AFMs. I've adjusted the TPS. I've tried different TPSs. Um, as you can see, I have a different Dizzy. This is the factory um, 8.6 Dizzy. Um, you know, I've 
added grounds. Done just about everything you can do. Um, you know, I've made, I've gotten rid of all the, there's no vacuum leaks, there wasn't any, but I've, I've gone over and made sure there's no vacuum leaks. Um, I've done everything and it still persists. It, it'll start up and run fine. And then when you give it gas, it just kind of bogs out and wants to die. Um, but then it'll go back to idle and be fine. You, then you could kind of, you could crack the throttle like this and it'll rev all the way to red line and be fine. But it, but it, once you go like that far, a little bit over like a quarter throttle, it just dies. It wants it to die. So um, kind of dealing with that at the moment. It's kind of annoying. Um, you know, I've done everything that people have suggested. D timing, timing is, I know it's 100% correct. TPS, I know is correct. Um, the last thing I have to really test is going to be the injectors, which, you know, it is what it is. I got to, I got to probably, I think uh, on eBay, they sell a kit that eliminates the resistor pack and you can run high Z like newer style injectors. Um, so I'm, I'm probably going to go that route. Um, I just have to order the parts. So um, it's not too expensive. It's like 160 bucks. And you get four new injectors, which are newer style injectors, and then you get to eliminate the resistor pack, which it's all good for me. That seems like a win. Um, I've kind of cleaned up things a little bit. I added, we, we got the support mount in. I gotta clean up all this. I gotta clean up all this um, white lithium grease, but um, got this from a friend, got this from a friend. Um, obviously, I still gotta, I still gotta get these mounted up but I um, also need to make a mount for the oil cooler um, I'm not sure how I want to do it if I want to mount it off of here or I can make a bracket coming off here or something um, there's lots of options I might just stick it use some of those those little things right there and those little um, radiator kind of mount things and stick it through I don't really care at the moment I have factory ones that I might use but yeah you know there's so many other projects before then that I'm kind of worried about. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? I'm gonna be throwing the timing stuff back on. Um, I kind of like the way it looks, and I obviously need to paint the valve covers. Blah blah blah. But yeah, so that's really about it. Um, I threw a T3, um, the T3 test pipe on. Uh, fits good, uh, so it's a little less quiet. I added an O2 sensor, you could probably see down there. And then I plugged up the the spare O2 that you could add for like a, um, you know, like an aftermarket AFR gauge. Um, what else, what else, what else? I'm probably gonna, I think I, want, I might wanna throw the factory, I have a factory um, clutch fan. I might run that instead of trying to run an electric fan. I kinda like the kind of factory feel of doing that kind of I don't know here in Arizona you know I don't have to worry about it or I mean I have relays I could just hook up something so I uh, also got this uh, little fuse sticker um, I can't his name's Matt I think his name's Matt Sanders he he makes these so I was able to I mean and they're like five bucks dude it's like you can't you can't beat that five bucks for this I ordered one from a6 legends and it's been you know, over a month, probably a month and a half since I, um, since I ordered and I haven't even got it. So that's where we're at with the eight, six. Um, I'm kind of getting a little bit burnt out on it because it, it just, it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to let me love it. You know, it's one of those situations. So yeah. And you can see, let me show you over here. So I've swapped, this is an MR2 Dizzy. I've tried that, doesn't work. I've tried different caps and rotors, nothing. I've tried, as you can see, I got multiple AFMs. I've got another TPS. Um, I've tried everything people have suggested, nothing. Uh, it gets a little frustrating a little bit because, you know, I guess if the internet is the internet and it's cool. They've actually helped me, but you know, I, I they kind of make you feel stupid. Like, you know. <laughs> You know how it goes. Like they're like, oh, make sure your plugs are good. It's like, I got it. I know the plugs are good. It's something, something random. The last, thing, the only thing I haven't done so far is the fuel system. So, 
Fuel injectors are going to be next, and I need to test uh, for fuel pressure. It's running. The problem is it's running rich, and everyone who who typically has this problem, um, it's running lean, and so my plugs are just fouled out. So I feel like it's um, maybe the injectors are sticking, or they're you know you know something like that where they're just dumping too much fuel. I don't know. The injectors seemed pretty clean and pretty nice. They had like newer gaskets on them and stuff. So our newer O rings. So anyways, um, I'm ranting. So the new project. All right. Are you ready? There's Lola. Lola's chilling. Um, haven't really done anything to her. She's I'm pretty sure the valve seals that I put in or that I got put in were bad. So I got to do that. I'm going to wait for... I'm gonna wait for uh, the, when it gets a little bit cooler. I threw an 8.6 little gauge, little um, center console bezel thing in there. It's just sitting in there, but it definitely helps. It helps the look of it, makes everything look a little cleaner. So it's all 8.6 stuff. I just gotta throw a little block off plate. I'm debating whether or not I wanna add some speakers and a stereo system. Um, I know this seems kinda cool, but um, People always like that for some reason, but you know, I wouldn't mind having a little bit of a cleaner thing, even though this is kind of race car y. Um, it's kind of nice having a stereo, but let's come over here. So, here she is it is a 1986 Toyota Cressida. I'm a Corolla guy, you know through and through but a buddy was selling this and it, even though she's dirty right now she's pretty clean um not perfect but pretty clean and which is like kind of like how i look like my cars not perfect but clean um I, if, you know when you have a perfect car it, it becomes kind of a hassle because you got to worry about scratching I, I i like the idea of this because i can just use it and have it obviously she's kind of sitting so you're gonna find out why i can't use it but let's um give you an intro to the interior interior's pretty clean um sorry there's gonna be some glare because we're aiming towards the sun but um typical cressida kind of stuff let's get down in here um we're gonna be doing a little bit of work on it today. I'm gonna to try and post you up so you could actually see see what I'm doing, but I, I can't find my mount for some reason. So, um, got some aftermarket gauges, as you can see, and it's even got an aftermarket um, cluster. So, I guess you're gonna see why it has all that stuff in there. Um, you know, pretty complete car. In the back, I have so in the back, I have, well, there's a go pad um, that I'm working on for my son. And then, that's what's cool about having a big old wagon like this. When you're not using it, it becomes part storage. Then this is a bumper for my GX470. It's like in perfect condition that I'm going to be uh, swapping um, once we're done with this road trip. Oh, and there's a there's the, the engine cover. So, um, pretty clean car. Um, for the most part inside um, got a quick release royal wheel which you know it's whatever it's decent enough um, and it's got some speakers all around has a stereo missing a few things here and there little trim bits but that's kind of what we're going to be working on today um, as you can see it's missing the entire it's missing the surround here and the column surround and then it's also missing obviously the whole lower portion of the of the dash and it's missing the hood pool every car gets freaking missing the hood pool so um so we got some parts to swap over also this is uh obviously not there and so oh yeah and as you can see we have so it's manuel which is pretty cool and what do we have in here oh oh Oh, what's that? What is that right there? 
a little teaser. All right, so, so yeah, so right now the engine turns on, actually turns on and runs. Um, but, so here's a rear diff. I also have a Celica Supra, the OS Gaikin LSD. Um, I don't know the gears offhand, but what I was told is that the, the actual ring or the pinion is like stripped out or messed up. Hood for the, oh, or I mean trunk for the um, A6. Uh, yeah, that was one thing I forgot to mention. Let's come over here and show you. So I replaced it. I've had this trunk sitting around my house for freaking three, three years at least. And um, kind of sanded it down. It's pretty, pretty good, pretty good shape. So um, gonna be rocking this. I'm gonna try and get it painted the same color, or I'm gonna paint it actually. But um, you know, just to give it a little bit cleaner look. However, I'm kind of, I'm kind of leaning towards make aggressive. Um, you know, I don't know. I just tend like if you look at Lola, she's pretty aggressive on the stance. And I'm kind of liking that. So, so the wheels, these wheels actually came on the wagon, and then I wanted to test them out here, and I love it. So, and then actually I really like these as well. So let's show you the engine, <clears throat> and we can. Oh wait, I'll give you a little. I'll give you a little hint. I say over there. These are, um, these wheels are, are, are called, um, they call them Magnums. They're very popular, like in uh, Florida, Puerto Rico. Uh, they're just, I don't know, they're just a lot more common there. A uh, friend, friend named Chris gave these to me, or let me borrow them, but I just, <laughs> they've been with me for uh, like two years, over two years, maybe three years now. So I just throw them, they just fit on everything. see here she is I put new, new new hood struts on it too so as you can see it's not the factory 5m we have a uh, 3sg beams ITBs custom header you know every bolt-on really you could put on one of these um, you know, it has full suspension. So T3, coilovers, camber plates, um, all the links, T3, T3 Panhard. Um, what else, full custom exhaust, V-band exhaust. And I bought it like this. You can't, t you know, you could, you know, I prefer when I could, um, when I'm the one that does all the stuff, but you know, I had been wanting this wagon for a while and it uh, came up for sale. My buddy hit me up and the price was very good. So I swooped it up. Here's the issue we have with it. She starts and runs. Um, problem is, I believe it's the number three. I forget offhand, two or three. Um, it has zero compression and um, did a compression test. Sure enough, zero compression. Then I did a leak down test on it and intake valve is busted, is bent or burnt or something. So effectively the whole, the head has to come off and we have to figure out what's going on with it. Um, I'm hoping it's just a valve. We take the Swap a new valve in, good to go. Uh, might do a full job on the head, but this head was was supposedly um, gone through. So um, before this, and then it happened again. So we're not sure exactly what's going on with it. But um, uh, yeah, the the dude who did the swab did a, a pretty good job on it. Um, there's a few things that need to be cleaned up, you know, as as things do usually, but. Uh, you know, I like it kind of 
I like kind of the style of it right now. It's a little bit race car-y and I wouldn't mind having it be a race car kind of thing. I know it's like a, it's a random swap, right? It's a beam swap. So um, it's, it's a little different. Most people throw one J's in these things, two J's. So I like underpowered cars and to me, this is the perfect swap. Um, you can still get beams for relatively cheap. So um, I have a friend with another complete beams that I might buy. Oh yeah, so it's got um, J160 six speed. And it's, it's got the J160 six speed OS Gaiken. Uh, is it the flywheel? Or the Fidanza clutch, I think. I'm, I'm probably spouting off the wrong shit, but it's got a lightweight flywheel, OS Gaiken clutch or something. <laughs> Why can't I think of it offhand? Um, that's a problem when you buy like someone else's project. You don't really know everything that was done to it. But um, basically, it's been converted over to lightweight clutch, lightweight flywheel, um, you know, uh, performance clutch. And um, and I think it's got a short shifter in it as well. So, so it's pretty race car-y right now. It's hard to... Um, it's a little bit annoying. Um, I like a more factory clutch. Like even the clutch I put in Lola, it is um, <clears throat> it is like a stage two clutch. You know, pretty mild, and it didn't even look that crazy. But it's just it's more annoying to drive than the than the factory Zeddy clutch I put in the eight six. So uh, is what it is. Man, my hair's like all checked up. Who cares though, right? Um, so this is kind of a long video so far. Uh, I might cut some of this out, I don't know. But um, I wanted to post up a little bit of work. Oh yeah, let's go, I'll show you what this video. So this needs a rebuild, but, and I gotta decide, do I wanna put it in this, or do I wanna put it in the A6? I don't know. But here's some parts we got for it. So, the I got the kick panel, driver's side kick panel. Got some hardware for it. This is the underdash piece, the complete under, like the deep under underdash piece. Um, we got some fog lights because it's missing uh, one of the fog lights. Got all this stuff from a local guy, which is freaking super cool. Um, he's a good guy too. His name's Aaron. Um, okay, we got the fogs. Um, have this piece that I showed you. It was broken. I'm not even. I mean, I'm not even gonna have the HVAC, but. Um, you know it's nice to have those little those little all these little things obviously i don't have crews but we'll have the, the at least that part in there to block it off i have this under dash or i have the like the lower console which is amazing um and then last but not least hood pool this is like i'm so happy i got this because it's, it's the hood's been like partially open and it's kind of annoying What's crazy to me is like, I'm used to Corollas, man. You, this piece is like, I don't, it's like, I would say it's easily 10 pounds. It's all metal. It's like, this is the full, it's like, sh it's all metal and it's, um, it's like structural. You know what I mean? It, it's crazy. I'm not used to that. Like, it, this was a Corolla. This would just be plastic and there'd be like, instead of all this metal, there'd just be like one bar. So um i'm gonna try and um get this stuff installed and um i don't have my mount but i'll, I'll try to post you up and um take a little video of me installing it so so yeah so let's uh let me get you set up and then we'll uh, come back i almost forgot also got the wagon so this is like the trim for the rear windows which I only need one, but I picked up both just in case. Figured it's not going to be a super common part to find, so swooped them both up. So, anyways, yeah, let me get you set up. All right, so there might need to be a few uh, camera changes, but um, this is what I'm working with right now. So try to bear with me. Um, I don't have a tripod or anything set up, so um, you can see what I'm doing, and that's really all that I care about at the moment. Okay, so we have this lower dash piece. I'm uh, gonna feed this, it's the, tr the hood release cable. We got this, 
guessing there's one more electrical thingy. Maybe it's up here. It's for the speakers or something. I'm not sure. You know what? Nothing's even connected anyway, so. Maybe it's for here. There we go for that one. There we go. There we go. Alright. Let's. Looks like it. Can you see? Not bad. Uh, came out pretty good. Definitely fills in that that gap a little better. I need to work on getting um, the actual steering column surround, but I'm gonna take this. Looks like there's. Boom. Looking good. And I'll show you what I mean by adjusting the preload over here real quick. Of course. So the actual, the factory guy was broken. It's supposed to go in there. So what I did was I have the zip ties that hold this in place to the proper position. So that way when you actually pull the cable, it doesn't, pull, when you pull the hood release, it doesn't pull the whole cable. So this is just holding it in place, acting as that little plastic clip. So, <clears throat> so I just have to adjust this a little bit more, give us a little bit more slack and then we should be good. So, ugh, let's see. All right, so thanks for watching. Um, if you're still with me, then you're awesome. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to post some more videos about this. I, I keep trying to post more videos, but you know how it goes sometimes. Just, I feel like it's a waste of time to post these little piddly videos, but cool beans if you're still with me. Um, you know, like I said, I'll try to get more stuff out, but I don't really like making YouTube videos. I like to make videos and then post them to YouTube, if that makes sense. I don't make YouTube videos. I make videos and post them to YouTube, so... I'll check you guys later. Right, let's see. Big moment here. Boom. 
we have hood lock, latch and prop. I mean, in uh, release. Boom. Um, I gotta adjust this a bit, I think. Uh, I need to come up a smidge, so I'll do that real quick. And we will have fully functioning hood. <laughs> 